Hi friends, welcome to Team Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about template inheritance in Flash Jinja templates. So what's meant by template inheritance? So using template inheritance, we can create a base template or a master template and the child templates can inherit that master templates to create complex web layouts. This enables the reusability, template splitting and consistency in layouts of all the web pages. So basically using template inheritance, you can group all the common HTML in a single parent base template and reuse it in all the child layouts. So in order to demonstrate the template inheritance in this video, we are going to create a layout something like this. This layout is actually based on the start bootstrap theme and the link is given in this blog post. This is a really great bootstrap theme and I have used this HTML and CSS to create our layout. So let's get started with coding. I'm going to take a blank folder and I'm going to open it with VS Code. So first I'll create a flash server and serve a simple page. For that I'll create a server python file. I'll just name it server.py. So this is a simple flash server which renders a template called home.html.j2 and it should be placed in the templates folder. And the server will listen at the local host port 5000 and I've set the debug is equal to true so that I can easily debug the errors. So we need to create the home.html.j2 right. So let's create a new folder called templates and in the template folder I will create the home.html.j2 file. So this is a simple HTML which I'm serving from the home.html.j2 file and now server is ready let's try to run this. I'll just run this server and I'm going to go to my browser and write localhost 5000 and you can see the Jinja template is being rendered. So now our setup to serve Jinja templates is ready. Let's try to create a base template for our home page. So in this templates folder I'll create a new folder called base and in this base folder I'll just create a new file and I'll name it layoutbase.html.j2. So this is going to be the base template which home.html.j2 will inherit. So this is the base template which we are going to use in our example and there is a lot of HTML which you don't need to understand. I've just copy pasted it from the start bootstrap theme site. But here what you have to understand is this block tags. So block tags in Jinja HTML is basically the placeholders where the child templates can fill their content. So let's try to use this layoutbase.html.j2 base template in our home.html.j2 page. So in order to declare that this is the child template of the base template, you need to use the extends Jinja template tag. So I'm going to use that now. So here you write extends and you write the path of the base template file. The base template file path is base slash layoutbase.html.j2. So I have given the relative path of the base template. Since the base template is present in the base folder, I have written base slash layoutbase.html.j2. If the layoutbase.html.j2 is present in the same folder as home.html.j2, you can just write layoutbase.html.j2. But here since it's present in the base folder, I have written base slash layoutbase.html.j2. All right, now our template extends the base template, but we were talking about the blocks. Let's try to use this simple block called title. So the syntax for creating a block in base template is something like this. So you declare the block and end block and give the name of the block. So here the name of the block is title. So in my home.html.j2, I can actually fill content in that block using something like this. In this Jinja tags, I can write block title and I have to write end block so that I can, I can close the block and I will write the name of the page here called home. So what I did in the child template is I have declared the block and filling the content here. So this way this block will be substituted by this content. So here in place of the block title end block, when the page is rendered by the flask in the web page, you will have home rendered over there. So these block tags are like placeholders for the child templates to fill the content in the parent templates or base templates. And there is one more block here in this base template called content. As per the main layout, the main content should be present in this div. So we have created a block here called content and the main content of the page should go in this block actually. So here in my home.html.j2, instead of writing the HTML here, I would write in this block, right? So let's copy paste this line here and instead of ma making the block title, I will write the block as the content because this is the block which I want to fill, right? So in this content block, I can write my HTML. So this way I fill my content block also. Okay, so far so good. We have learned how to substitute the content inside the base template blocks from the child template. All right, now let's take a scenario where I want to substitute data in the parent block and I want to append extra content to this parent block. So how can we do that? And for this purpose, super tag comes to the rescue. So let's see how it's done. I'll just copy this block again and I'll rename the block name as head. I'll just move it to the next line. Here is where I can substitute the content of the head block, right? But before substituting, I want to render the parent block also here again. So 
So how can I do that? Using the Jinja template tags, I can add a keyword called super. So what this super does is that it will render the parent template or the base template content in the child template. So if I write super, all this HTML inside the parent template or the base template will be rendered here. And if you want to append the content to this head block, I can just write the new content in the new line. So for example, if I want to add moment JS in my child template inside the head block. So first I have written super so that all the contents inside the parent head block will be rendered and below that head block of the parent, the script tag will be rendered. So this way using the super tag, you can retain the parents content and append or prepend extra content in the child templates. All right, I've added one more block called scripts. So the script blocks is present here. So this is also a placeholder where you can add extra scripts in your child pages. So in my home page, I use the scripts block to add new extra style to my page. All right, so now let's talk about the include tag in Jinja templates. So here in this base template, I use the include tag and said that I need a file called authorized partial.html.j2 to be included in this base template. I have copied the authorized partial.html.j2 from my blog post, so you can also do that. So, but the point is, I'm splitting the base template furthermore into new files so that code is more readable. I can write the content of authorized partial.html.j2 here also, but in order to make the template more readable, I'm splitting my template using the include tag. So now all the HTML corresponding to the authorized user's menu HTML is actually split in this authorized partial.html.j2. So this way using the include tag, you can split your base template into multiple files so the template is more readable. In the base template, there is one more include tag and it requires a HTML file called login partial.html.j2. I have copy pasted the login partial.html.j2 from the blog post and placed it in the base folder. So this is the login partial.html.j2 and I have included that in my base template. So this way I have separated the HTML for the login section of the header in my base template. So here also I could have written the login partial HTML content here only instead of writing include. But in order to make my template more readable and maintainable, I am splitting my template using the include tag. So this way using template inheritance, I can serve complex layouts in a reusable manner in very less lines of code. So let's try to run this server again and let me try to reload the output. All right, I got unknown block super because I did a small mistake here. Here, I need to do the double bracket instead of the bracket percentage. You have to render the super. So save it and reload this. But it's not like the example which I have seen in the blog post. This is because in the base template, I'm getting the JavaScript files from the node modules folder. And I don't have the node modules folder in the static folder. So let's try to create that. I'll just create a new folder called static. And here there should be a node modules folder with all the libraries as per the requirement of the base template. Instead of creating the files in the node modules folders manually, you can use npm install to automatically create your node modules folder. So I'll just create a new file called package.json and these are the dependencies which you need to install and I've mentioned this in the blog post so that you can copy paste and use it in your examples also. So in this static folder, I'll open a command prompt by right clicking here and open an integrated terminal and here I'm going to use the command npm install. So what npm install does is that it will create a node module folder and all the required JavaScript files as per the requirements in the package.json file. So now all the node modules folder JavaScript files and CSS files are available in the static folder and we have used URL for to create the dynamic URL for the static files. If you don't know about URL for I already created the video on that and I will leave the link in the description so you can check it out. So now let's try to reload our example. And now since all the JavaScript libraries and CSS libraries are present in the node modules folder, we are able to see the template as expected. All right, now let's get to the fun part. Let's try to create a new page just like home page and try to modify the content a little. So I'll just copy this home page and create a new page and I'll just write it like page1.html.j2. And here in the content, I'll write this is another page. And in the title block, I want to change the title as another page. And I don't want this moment JS required in this another page, so I'll just cut this here. And if you want to just render your parent block just like this, you don't need to do this also. You can just ignore this. And by default, Flask will render the parent block if it's not overwritten. So here in my page1.html.j2, I'm not overwriting the head block, but there is content in this head block, right? So Flask by default will render this content in your child template. So I'll say this page1.html.j2 and let's try to serve this from our server. So I'll just copy this root and create another root called page. And here let's render the template called page1.html.j2 and save it. And let me try to change the function name also because you need to have another function name and the function name is page. 
let me try to save it now and run the server let's try to reload our output so instead of local 1500 i'll write local 1500 slash page and you can see this is another page and the title is changed also so now you can see the benefit of using the base layouts by separating all the complicated html in a single base file and creating blocks like this and substituting the blocks in the child templates you can reuse the complicated layouts in all the pages of your application and it gives you an added benefit of harmonization of the look of all the pages in your web application you can see i've created a blog post on template inheritance in flash jinja templates i've also given you the template code so that you can copy paste and use it in your real world projects I have also given you the references to do further reading. Please ask any questions or provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.